And just like that, we are already four weeks into the NFL season. And while a lot of players have done their best to play either up to their worth or even more than their worth, a lot of players have done their best to play down to their worth and have come out the gates really weak to this point. Some of these players even got massive contract extensions this offseason and so far they have been absolute ghosts during the field this season. In today's video, we'll look at players who have been massive disappointments to start the season so far. Now I said so far because these players obviously can have the chance to turn it around. It's not too late for them quite yet. But right now, they're looking pretty rough. And a disclaimer, rookies will not be on this list because rookies deserve the chance to get one year of bad play or a bad play before in your second year we start to say, okay, time to get it together. We're not caught on you no more. But wanted to get it out of the way, so Caleb Williams will not be on here and Roman Dunze will also not be on here. Before I get into the video though, make sure if you haven't yet, you subscribe to my channel and set the bell icon for future football content and follow me on social media is down below in the description. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. First quarterback we're going to take a look at is Will Levis. Now, I wasn't expecting Will Levis to be a top 10 quarterback or elite or anything like that, but I also wasn't expecting him to be a bottom five quarterback at this point in this season. As of right now, Will Levis currently has over 600 yards passing, four touchdowns to six interceptions. Go along with those three interceptions, by the way, Will Levis also has three interceptions, so turnovers have been a major problem for Will Levis to start the season. Levis has also put the ball in some very bad situations to start the season early so far as well. As of right now, Levis has a turnover-worthy play percentage of a 4.7, which as of right now is one of the top five worst in the league. In the week 4 matchup against the Miami Dolphins, Will Levis got injured in that game. However, he was cleared to come back, but Mason Rudolph came into the game and looked a lot better than Will Levis. So do not be surprised for week 5 if Will Levis ends up being benched for Mason Rudolph to start the game, because so far to start the season, he has been really bad. Another quarterback who has not started the season too hot to this point is Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is consistently in MVP conversations pretty much every year, but I'd have to imagine this year, he will not be in that conversation. Starting the season for Jalen Hurts, he's thrown the ball for over 900 yards, four touchdowns to four interceptions. He also fumbled the ball five times this season with three of them being lost fumbles. If you thought Will Levis' turnover worthy play percentage was bad, Jalen Hurts is a lot worse. Currently right now, according to PFF, he has the worst turnover worthy play percentage in the league, sending out a 6.7. You could argue majorly that the reason that this team has even won two games this season is because of Saquon Barkley and his production, not because of Jalen Hurts. And if Hurts does not improve massively real quick, this team is going to have a lot of trouble down the road because you can't keep depending on Saquon Barkley to bail you out and win games. It didn't work against the Buccaneers, it didn't work against the Falcons. The next guy we're going to take a look at is a guy who was in contract disputes all offseason with the 49ers before finally signing an extension. And that was of course Brandon Ayuk who had a 4 year, $120 million extension to stay with the 49ers. Despite there being rumors that he might get traded to the Commanders and of course the Steelers, he stuck with the 49ers. And let's just say Brandon Ayuk has not been very productive to start the season to this point. Four games into the season, Brandon Ayuk has 13 receptions for 167 yards and had a single touchdown recorded to this point. The crazy part about this is Jawan Jennings, who was the wide receiver three on this team, has been outplaying Brandon Ayuk significantly. He has 21 receptions for 364 yards and three touchdowns on the season to this point. You can definitely up these numbers at some point, but as of right now, he has not been playing pretty well. And that contract extension is looking pretty bad to this point. But as I said before, this is an overreaction, so he might improve on that. Next guy we're going to discuss is once again another guy who had a contract extension this offseason. And that was Brian Burns, who was traded from the Panthers to the New York Giants in exchange for two second round picks. So far, Burns only showed up in one game for the New York Giants this season, where he had six pressures, one sack, and a forced fumble in that game. However, in his game against the Vikings, the Commanders, and also the Dallas Cowboys, Burns has almost been non-existent in all of these games. He is currently one of the highest paid defensive players in the league, and right now, he is not really playing anything close up to that margin to this point. The whole defensive line for the Giants in general had a lot of expectations, and right now, I'd have to argue they're disappointing pretty badly. Bryce Hub is going to be the next player we take a look at, and he has been a lot worse than Brian Burns to this point, and he has pretty much been a ghost worse than Brian Burns. Right now, Bryce Huff has only three pressures on this season, one tackle, and not a single sack on the season to this point. The 
Hassan Reddick was a major piece for this Eagles defensive line for a while, and Bryce Huff was brought in to replace him, and to no surprise to this point, he has done nothing to replicate that success that Hassan Reddick had on the team. Mark Andrews is going to be the next player we discuss on this list today. It looks like Mark Andrews' days as a Baltimore Raven might be numbered, as in his past two games for the Ravens, he has failed to record a single reception in those past two games. So far this season, he only has 6 catches for 65 yards and 0 touchdowns on the season to this point. Former Coast Carolina tight end Isaiah Lightly has been the main tight end for the Baltimore Ravens over the past couple weeks. And honestly, I would not be surprised that Mark Andrews traded at some point before the trade deadline or exactly on the trade deadline, as it looks like his future with this team is pretty much up in the air. Reese Hall is going to be the next player we discuss on this list today. Brees Hall was expected to be one of the better running backs in the league to start the season. However, to this point, he has been very disappointing. And so far this season, he has 56 carries for 174 yards and just two touchdowns on the season. Along with that, he's averaging around 3.1 yards per carry, which is pretty self-explanatory. That is not very good at all. Meanwhile, Braylon Allen has been very productive to start the season to this point, and he's a running back too on this team at this point. He has 27 carries for 130 yards, 4.8 yards per carry, and one touchdown on the season to this point. Personally, I'm not going to jump to any assumptions quite yet, but I believe at some point, Braylon Allen could be the running back one on this team if Brees Hall does not get it going. These next two guys were both first overall picks in their respective draft classes, and the first guy we're going to discuss is Trevor Lawrence. Start the season, Lawrence threw for over 700 yards, 4 touchdowns, and just 1 interception to start the season. Now that might seem like, you know, it's not terrible, but it's not good either. But for a guy who's the highest paid quarterback in the league right now, this is not good. This is not a standard he should be setting right now. The accuracy over the past couple weeks has been very shaky, and Trevor Lawrence overall just looks like a very broken quarterback who might be beyond fixing to this point. If Jaguars organization is serious about Trevor Lawrence, they need a clean house. Doug Peterson might need to go, Press Taylor definitely needs to go, but most importantly, Trenton Balky, the general manager, one of the worst general managers in the league, matter of fact, the worst general manager in the league, he also needs to go. Really hard to imagine, but I can definitely see a scenario where Trevor Lawrence is benched for the rest of the season, being that the Jaguars are at an 0 for a record and their season is pretty much beyond saving. If not though, Trevor Lawrence might have a chance to make this season a good one, but for himself, not so much the Jaguars, they're pretty much already screwed. I said we were going to discuss two first overall quarterbacks in this part of the video and Bryce Young is going to be the next guy on this list. Bryce Young's days with the Carolina Panthers, it's honestly over. I don't imagine him winning his job back. In two games into the season for the Carolina Panthers, he threw for 245 yards, zero touchdowns, three interceptions, by far being one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Matter of fact, the worst quarterback in the league. Receivers were already expressing disappointment about being open and Bryce Young not hitting them, so Dave Canales had to make a change. And after the game against the Chargers, he announced that Bryce Young will be benched in favor of Andy Dalton. What did Andy Dalton do in his first start for the Carolina Panthers this season? Well, he threw over 300 yards, 3 touchdowns, and 0 picks and led the Panthers to their first win of the NFL season in 2024. Despite not winning against the Bengals, he had another good game, throw for 200 yards, 2 touchdowns, but just 1 interception. Panthers offense all around has took a huge leap under Andy Dalton, and if I had to be honest, Bryce Link is not winning his spot back this season. You might as well trade him or do whatever you want to him because there is no chance you can give the job back to him after Andy Dalton's performing this well to this point. Final guy we'll take a look at in this video is Browns wide receiver Amari Cooper. Cooper has been searching for a contract extension with the Browns this offseason, and while he didn't get an extension, he got a raise, but not an extension as I said. And right now, if Amari Cooper truly wanted an extension, he's not playing like he wants it because he has been playing pretty bad to this point. To start the season to this point, Amari Cooper has 148 yards passing and just two touchdowns on this season to this point. Cooper has continuously dropped passes in big situations for the Browns. Currently right now, he has a 16.2 drop percentage. That is not a typo according to Pro Football Reference. That is definitely true. That his buddy Jerry Judy has not been having a drop problem, and drops were a big part of his NFL career at one point, but right now he has been having decent hands start the season to this point. And there's a good chance that Amari Cooper could be traded by the trade deadline, 
as the Chiefs have been currently linked to him after the injuries they've had to the receiving core to this point. Truthfully, I would not be surprised if he is traded. The Browns are 1-3, they're also not going to make the playoffs, and they're pretty much a lost hope with Deshaun Watson as their quarterback. So truthfully speaking, if he is traded, I wouldn't be surprised. They might as well start building for the future once again. Actually, that is not the final guy I'm going to discuss in this video, and this is kind of going under the radar, so I think we have to discuss him. The final player I'm actually going to discuss is tight end Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey has been a big disappointment to a lot of guys' fantasy teams and in general this season. In just four games, he has 15 receptions for 158 yards and he has yet to reach the end zone this season so far. Chiefs are going to need Travis Kelsey to step up big with Rasheed Rice being out for possibly the next couple of weeks. And the way he's playing this season, well, it might not give Chiefs fans the biggest optimism about the rest of the season for him. If anybody can get it going truly, it's Travis Kelsey, led by Patrick Mahomes. So let's just hope he gets it going for the Chiefs' sake. But that is the most disappointing player to start the NFL season to this point in 2024. If I missed a player, let me know in the comments down below. But if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and tap the bell icon for future football content. Follow my social media down below in the description. And I will hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.